This video is made under the assumption that you already have a little bit of experience with blindfold solving. In a way, M2 is very similar to the classic Pockman method. That is, you do a setup move, then an algorithm, then undo the setup move. With the M2 method, DF is the buffer, and the idea is to set up the target to UB, then do M2, then of course undo the setup move. So, after every piece you solve, you offset the M slice by an M2. This means UF and DB will continuously be swapped, then swapped back after each target you solve. But this will only work if the M slice is preserved after the setup move. So after the setup move, UB is the only piece in the M slice that is allowed to change. We'll start off by solving these edges with M2. So the cycle is DF to FR to DL. The first thing you want to do is find a way to bring the first target, FR, to UB without of course disrupting any other pieces in the M slice. So that means you can't just go R U prime because you disrupted UF, but you can do U R U prime. So that brought FR to UB, and everything else in the M slice is unchanged. So that's the setup. Now we can do M2 and undo the setup. The next target is DO. The way we can set this up is to do U prime L2 U. Again, notice how everything else in the M slice is unchanged, so that's a good setup. Now M2 and undo the setup. Solving pieces outside the M slice is pretty straightforward. The most difficult part about the M2 method is shooting to UF, FU, DB or BD. In order to be able to shoot to these four targets you have to know four very simple algorithms. Two if you don't include inverses. But before I show you those, I need to come back to an important point I made earlier. Every time you do M2, that is, every time you shoot to a target, UF and DB are swapped. And of course that also means FU and BD are swapped. The reason why this is significant is because if you have shot to an odd number of targets, and then the next target is either UF, FU, DB or BD, you have to realize that target is now an M2 away from how you memorized it. So let's say I've shot to five targets and then the next target I've memorized is FU. Well, if I've already shot to five targets, that means I've already did five M2s, five is odd, so I no longer have to shoot to FU I have to shoot to BD. Soon I'll do an example solve so you can understand that better. Now I'll show you the four algs you have to know. If you want to shoot to UF, you do this. And if you want to shoot to DB, you do the inverse. Now, normally this piece would belong there, but since the M slice is out by an M2, we have to actually shoot to DB. That can be done with this. If you want to shoot to FU, you can do this. And if you do the inverse of that, you actually shoot to BD. So again, this would normally belong at FU, but since the M slice is out by an M2, we have to actually shoot to BD. That can be done by doing this. Here's a scramble with all the corners solved. Obviously the first thing to do is memorize all the targets. 
Ideally, you should be memorizing the targets in pairs. That way, you can keep track of the M slice easily. The first target is RF, which goes to FU, which goes to BR. Now we have to break into a new cycle. I'm going to choose to shoot to UB, since all you have to do to shoot to UB is M2. So I'm going to break into a new cycle by shooting to UB. Then that goes to UR, which goes to FL. Then that goes to DB, which goes to UL. Then to RD. Then DL. Then LB. And LB comes back to UB. So that's the memorization done. Now for the execution. To jog your memory, we have to find a way to bring RF to UB without disrupting anything else in the amp slice. You can rotate it for this, but I'm just going to keep things simple by holding it in the same orientation. So this can be put to UB by applying the moves B prime R2 B. That's the setup. Now you can do M2 and undo the setup. This is where you might get confused. We memorized this as shooting to FU, but we're all already shot to one target. And since one is an odd number, it means we've done an odd number of M2s. So we don't shoot to FU anymore because the M slice is actually off by an M2. So rather than shooting to FU, we need to shoot to DB. Uh, BD, sorry. Right there. That can be done with this. The next target is BR, which can be solved by doing U, R prime, U prime, M2, undo the setup. Next target is UB, just M2. Now we shoot to UR, which can be solved, set up by doing R prime, U, R, U prime. Now M2, undo setup. The next target is FL, right there. That can be set up with U prime, L prime, U. Now M2, undo setup. Now the target is DB, which can be solved with this algorithm. The target is now UL, which can be set up with L, U prime, L prime, U. Now M2, undo setup. Now the target is RD, which can be set up by doing B prime, R prime, B. Now M2, undo setup. Now the target is DL, which can be set up easily by doing U prime L2 U. Now M2, undo setup. Now the target is LB, which can be set up by doing <coughs> L B L prime B prime M2, undo setup. The final target is UB, which can be solved with just M2. The setups for the 22 possible targets are listed in the video description. There are many different ways to deal with parity. I'll show you just a couple of ways now. If you have parity and you solve corners first, you can treat UBL as if it's UBR and vice versa. So when you've finished solving all the corners, you'll have them all solved except for these two, which will be swapped. Then, once you've finished with the edges, you'll end up with something looking like this. And what you can then do is M2, Y, L2, T palm, L2. That's one thing you could do if you solved corners first. If you have parity and you solve the edges first, 
what you can do is after you've solved all the edges like this you can do d prime l2 d m2 d prime l2 d what that does is it fixes the m slice and it also swaps these two edges so now as long as you solve an odd number of corners with classic Pockman, parity's fixed that is all goodbye